Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. I'm recording uh, this uh, video clip on the hottest day of the year, which is why I look like I'm rather hot. This is a book, anyway, called Trading Places. It's this one here. It's got a, a long title, subtitle, Trading Places, That and Customs Treatment of Imports, Exports, Intra-EU Transactions and Cross-Border Supplies of Services in the Digital Age. It's been written by Andrew Rimmer. There's a nice uh, spine. And then there's quite a bit on the back, which I will comment on in this short review. The book itself is uh, very much the standard uh, format for uh, Spiramus Press, who've published it. That's the index. It's not a detailed index at the back, but it's good enough for what purposes you might have. The book runs to 420 odd pages. The front cover, there's the front of it, the actual internal cover. Then there's detail, basically detail about the, um, the actual publication. Then there are some disclaimers. And after that, you've got a very detailed introduction. Now, Spiramus generally do tend to, to do fairly substantial uh, content sections to go with the more sparse um, index at the back, which you can see there. What you do have is a very, very important glossary at the back as well, because this is, a, this is actually quite a technical subject. But you can see how the chapter headings are structured all the way through. And as I say, I haven't done a particularly big, long review on this because I think it's a very important book. There we go, you can see the, the content sections. So there are 13 uh, chapters in total. Then you've got two appendices, terms of trade and useful addresses. Then it's got an introduction. You see it's paragraph numbered, which is very helpful. And it sets out what the purpose of the book is. The book sets out to guide readers through the highly complex VAT and import duty issues for importers, exporters and businesses transacting across the EU. Now, I've re I wrote the review prior to Britain deciding to leave the EU, so there will be changes taking place. Whether we get a new review quickly, a, a new book or not quickly, I don't know. But you can again see the structure. Again, paragraph numbering, and there are examples are given, which is always quite helpful when you have this mix of accountancy and legal issues, where they give you practical working examples of, of how the actual um, legislation and the, the way in which the system actually works is, is set out in some detail. There are lots of tables throughout and it is, as I say, a highly technical work. Spira must provide this excellent professional service for us, both as lawyers and accountants. So what do I say about the book in relatively quick um, terms? It's recently been said that we're now entering the fourth industrial <coughs> revolution in the second decade of the 21st century. So Andrew Rimmer's new edition of Trading Places is very welcome. Um, the, uh, it keeps us freshly informed as the European Union faces what is going to be a very uncertain future, I su suggest, after Brexit, until we know exactly where we are with uh, our markets and the way in which we're going to do our importing and exporting, both within Europe, which must, I would have thought, continue, but also on the global plane as well. So Spiramus Publications, who are probably known to most of you, are always um, a pleasure to review because they uh, give a great insight for professional practitioners continuing to provide us with practical information which is relevant to the running of a business and I think trading places is, is no exception. The problem is when I was um, reading this book, I was reminded infrequently of the excellent film of the same name, uh, although the subject matter was somewhat different. Uh, that, the film, of course, was by Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd, who are the leading characters. I won't say any more than that, but uh, the trouble is they kept visions kept coming into my eye about what trading places was because it can mean a whole, um, actually quite a lot of different things to different people. Now what Rimmer has actually produced here with the second edition of this work, the first edition appeared in 2010, is described as a book which introdu introduces the main concepts and trade facilitation reliefs that businesses must understand if they are to trade internationally with the least interventionist, uh, with the least intervention and disruption from 
tax authorities. And that, of course, is what we seek, uh, whether we're going to get it or not, and there are lots of criticisms, uh, is another matter. The publishers say that the worst case scenario is for an importer to have their goods still within customs control instead of being where they're needed because the correct procedures have not been followed. That's been a problem for a very long time, but I mean, I think the hope was that that would go away. It hasn't yet, but we shall wait and see. And of course, linked to this is the need for businesses to secure the release of their goods, paying as little import duty and import VAT as possible. And whilst, of course, import VAT is recoverable uh, by most businesses, it still um, can cause major cash flow problems and cost, which of course also has to be funded and put into the overall equation. So import duty is an absolute cost, so importers must review all available means to reduce or remove the duty payable. And I think again that's a, a valid way in which this book for those people involved um, in this particular sector will find helpful. Now what the author does, Rima highlights the, the meaning of importing goods and arriving at the customs value at which import duty and import VAT are computed. That in itself is very good. There are examples which I mentioned in the book. It also provides a commentary on export procedures and the VAT treatment of intra-EU trading, which again is very important because it's going to take two years for Britain to leave, so we're still going to require all this information as we see the way in which the changes take place as and when they possibly do. Obviously the information is, uh, includes potential fiscal barriers to exploiting non-UK markets and again that becomes for the new team who are running the British government that will be um, an interesting development for them to look at. Now the second edition introduces the myriad rules concerning intangible services and the taxation of downloaded digitized products and whilst the rules can um, be said to be easy to follow as ever with a value-added tax understanding the exact nature of the service how it's provided and where it is consumed are all fundamental problems which have to be organized recognized and uh, sorted out the chapters on potential pitfalls and planning for international trade provide the reader with an overview of best practice when looking to import or export goods or when setting out to supply services internationally. The publication date is 2016. There's the book again, front, side and then the back. The actual detail in five, first uh, published in December 2010 and then second edition May 2016. So it's come out just before the decision to leave took place. And as I say, you can see the introduction, the purposes and all the other stuff in there. Opening the book in the middle, import duty and import VAT reliefs. Again, very important because you really do know, need to know your way around the regulations and the rules. And this book will give you quite a lot of helpful advice. So thank you very much to Spiramus uh, Publishing and also to Andrew Rimmer for producing this new excellent uh, second edition on Trading Places. Thank you to all. Bye-bye.